Hey guys, my name is Haley, and I will be filming my April wrap-up today, so let's get right on into it, because I read a lot this month. So the first book that I read was actually Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi, and I actually read it in like two days because, number one, the writing was amazing and I loved it, and it was, I thought it was pretty fast-paced, even though kind of depressing, but I actually read it because... I was planning on buddy reading the second and third book in this series with a friend of mine here on booktube, so I wanted to read it as fast as possible so we could get started on that. And I gave it 5 out of 5 stars, I loved it. It's some of the prettiest writing I've ever read in my life, so I can't wait to get my hands on more of Tahara Mafi's stuff. I know she has another book coming out soon, so I'm really excited. And then I actually was going to read another random book off my shelf before that weekend because the weekend from the 8th to the 10th was hashtag TBR takedown 3.5. So before that happened, I decided to pick up a random book off my shelf that I'm sure I got at a thrift store somewhere at some point and just never read it and it had been there for a while so I figured I should probably get around to that so I could have more room on the TBR shelf. <laughs> so this is called I'll Be There by Holly Goldenberg Sloan. And it was okay. It was a very sort of destiny based, pretty predictable YA contemporary. I, at least I thought it was predictable, I could be wrong, it was very dramatic. And I wasn't that attached to the characters, but I ended up giving it, I think, either a 2.5 or 3 stars. I don't remember. I'll leave my Goodreads link down below if you want to check it out. But yeah, that was the first thing, well, second thing that I read. Um, and then that weekend was TBR Takedown, which is my favorite readathon, and I was really excited to have another version of it, even if it was just a shorter version. So the first thing that I read for that was earlier in the week I had started Beautiful Disaster for another reason of I just wanted to get it off my shelves, it had been there for a while, and I actually got maybe a quarter of the way through, halfway through, a couple days before TBR Takedown started, and I was just so annoyed with the characters <laughs> and the situation and everything that was going on so I actually put it down <laughs> and just didn't read it for a couple of days and I really think the only reason I finished this was because it counted towards one of the reading goals and things for TBR takedown I think I used it for um Oh, on my shelf for over a year, that's what it was, because I've had it for a long time. And I was kind of optimistic because I know it has very mixed reviews and I wasn't sure what end of that review I would be on, but I despised this book so much. I thought the characters made some of the worst decisions they could have made for themselves. If you really want to see my... Goodreads review that got some attention on Goodreads or at least compared to what I usually get and I was like oh people are apparently more interested in bad reviews <laughs> but yeah I was I was not a fan I actually had another book in the series that I found at a thrift store too and I am fully ready to unhaul that when I get rid of this one probably very soon because So next, I picked up this beautiful book. It's A Work in Progress by Connor Franta. And the thing is, I found this in the bargain section at Books A Million, which is the death of me, and I buy way too many of my books there. But I always thought this was beautiful, and I've seen random videos of Connor's over the years of being on YouTube. But I've always thought his book was gorgeous, and I just, some of the pages in here are some of the prettiest things I've ever seen. 
Let me find a good one. He's got a bunch of pretty photography pages with print on them. And there was a coffee one in here that I really love that I'm determined to find right now. There it is. Like, look at that. I just, um, it feels nice. It's got pretty flaps. And I actually really liked the stories he had in here about his life. So I feel like I know a lot more about him, even though I'm not that familiar with his channel. But I loved this. I gave it five out of five stars. And I think I counted it for a book for my most recent haul because I just bought it that week. So yeah. And then the last book that I read for TBR Takedown was Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. And the thing with this book is, as you can see, I tabbed it quite a bit. But at first, I was really worried that I wasn't going to like this because all these tabs in the beginning, I started to panic because I thought, what if I need to remember all of these different kinds of witches? that are going on and they're going to be brought up later and I'm going to be lost because I don't remember how many there were. Because <laughs> in the beginning, I kind of felt like they were being thrown at me at once. Like there was this kind of witch and then there was this kind of witch. And I was like, geez, slow down. Let me start writing these down. But once I got past that beginning part, I would say around 100 or 200 pages in, I fell in love with this. I thought, the writing was so fast-paced. I, I loved the characters. I really love Isult, I believe is how you pronounce her name. I thought her witchery was so interesting. And I just, I loved it so much. And I also really loved the Blood Witch. I thought he was incredibly interesting to learn about. And even though he was kind of a bad guy towards the beginning, you learn a lot more about him throughout the book, which I really liked. So I might do a separate review on this. Don't quote me on that, but if you would be interested in that, let me know. And then I know, I think I started Unravel Me at this point because we had started the buddy read. And I before I had also read Destroy Me, the novella, Warner's novella, which was phenomenal and one of the best novellas I think I've ever read. Not that I've read that many, but it definitely is necessary to the series, I would say. So in the process of reading Unravel Me and then into Ignite Me, I finished this beautiful book, like this gorgeous hardcover and that spine. <laughs> this was actually given to us by my bishop's wife for the church that I go to. And we were studying it for the last month or so to learn more about prayer and what Andrew Murray had to say on the subject of prayer. And I think it's a really good book for any Christian. The writing is a little bit dense, but I think if you can get past that and like what I did was take notes in one of my Bible journaling notebooks and... I had a blast with it. He has a lot of good points. It's very helpful to supplement your prayer life. So, yeah, I was very excited to get through this and study it alongside the rest of the people in our church that also picked it up. And then I finished this beautiful book right here. It's Ignite Me. It's the third book in the Shatter Me trilogy, and it might be one of my favorite books of all time. I'm not even going to lie. I'm a little bit obsessed with it. And I was going to film a Shatter Me wrap-up, but I was like in such feels of confusion and just love for these characters by the end of this series that I'm not sure I could have formed a coherent review. So that didn't happen, but... <laughs> This trilogy, especially because of this book and everything that's revealed to us about a certain character that I ended up loving. I've always followed, I have followed witty novels on Twitter for a long time. And she always raves about this and she always raves about Warner. And I always wondered why she was in love with him so much. But now I know. I understand and I am right there with you. 
I absolutely loved it. Five out of five stars. Ten out of five stars if I could give it that. One of the best books I've read in a long time. And then, because I was feeling ambitious and I had already started this book last year and I actually reread it to binge read the rest of the series, I read the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. The first one being The Lightning Thief, which I gave five out of five stars. And then I gave Sea of Monsters, I believe, three or four stars. I just thought it wasn't quite as exciting as this first one. And then the third book being The Titan's Curse. I really liked it, but parts of it were really slow, so I think I gave that one four stars. And then the fourth one, Battle of the Labyrinth, was probably my favorite, just because Labyrinth is one of my like buzzwords. If there's a Labyrinth, I'm all about that book, because I just love the idea of them. So... Yeah, that was one of my favorites. Definitely five out of five. And then The Last Olympian, which I read. And I read these books over the course of like maybe a week, week and a half. Like I was literally reading a book a day. And I was having a blast with it. I thought it was great. So I gave Battle of the Labyrinth, or Last Olympian, five out of five stars too. Because it was like wild from start to finish. Like there was no downtime. I liked the way the series wrapped up. And I can't wait to get into the Heroes of Olympus series. I need to get my hands on those books. So, yeah. And actually, in the last... When was it? It was from the 18th to the 24th was the Authorathon, which was a readathon created by Sam and Joanna. So I actually read four books for that, but I think I'm going to do a separate wrap-up for that readathon just because I don't have those books with me right now. <laughs> so I will be posting that hopefully sometime this week before the end of the month. And yeah, thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know if you wanted a separate review for Truth Witch because I might do some sort of either spoiler-free or spoiler review, depending on what you guys would like to see. And yes, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!